All right, so anyone who pays attention to my content in any way, shape, or form knows that I've been talking about doing this Brian Pumper video for a very long time. My computer messed up at one point. The audio mixer decided it wanted to sabotage the video at one point. Basically, everything that could have possibly gone wrong went wrong. But here I am, again, making this video because I really, really believe in this content. Now, that being said, right before we get into Brian Pumper, I do need to say a huge, huge shout out to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna be honest with you, last time I did a promo for the Ridge Wallet, eh, I wasn't actually a daily user of the Ridge Wallet. I was merely a, an admirer of the technology, but now, I use it every day. I can't imagine going back to a regular wallet. I don't really remember why I was walking around with a big smelly chunk of leather in my pocket for all those years. Anyway, I'm just a huge, huge fan of the Ridge wallet and I really think that you guys would be happy with your purchase. So go on, get yourself one and make sure you use the link on the screen or the link in the description, code Adam22. Here it is, it's Brian Pumper. The Brian Pumper video is finally here, yeah! Okay, so nowadays we're just used to the idea of social media stars, right? People like Supreme Patty or Tongue Girl or Fatboy SSE, they give us something to uh, gawk at on the timeline. And even though these types, time in the spotlight is usually somewhat limited, we've now all collectively accepted that people getting famous for acting like jabronis on camera is par for the course. Now, usually these social media stars rap or pivot into rapping at some point in their career as spitting some bars over a beat is something that seems attainable and easy enough to monetize. And let's be honest, the media fiends for these types of characters. Social media based companies need people to report on and if millions of people are going to go gawk at a clip of soldier boy or rico reckless who cares if they're selling records if worldstar needs viral stuff to repost on their instagram who cares if whoa vicky can't sing like beyonce or that guy who dresses like a cop is not actually a cop for the record i interviewed whoa vicky and the guy who dressed like a cop but my friends let me take you back to the year 2010 the internet had been a part of the average american's life for quite some time and people were starting to become more and more used to the idea that you were going to have some some new viral thing happening on the internet every week but the idea of someone intentionally acting like a dumbass just to get clout that they could then monetize was still a relatively new concept now around that time world star hip-hop was starting to become a dominant force in hip-hop and while fights rap videos and other viral crap was already their bread and butter they were also experiencing success posting videos from rappers who weren't so much popular for their music but for their antics Riff Raff, 50 Tyson, Cat Stags, Jeremy Rogers, they were all becoming staples on the World Star homepage because they ran up the views regardless of the quality of their music. Now some, like Riff Raff, managed to actually become somewhat popular rappers, at least for a little while, but basically the scene was set for any enterprising talent who was willing to act an a-hole on camera for World Star fans to eat up. Enter Brian Pumper. Brian grew up in Hempstead, New York, and not much is known about his early life except what he tells us in interviews, but one thing that Brian emphasizes and that seems to go without saying is that even as a youngin, Brian was horny. In this random street interview, he speaks on how he knew he was meant to be an adult star because he jerked off 10 times a day, gave every girl he slept with multiple orgasms, and said he wanted to do something different and unique. Always been horny, always loved women, loved Chased girls in high school, got laid in high school, got compliments in the bedroom. Oh my god, I just came and nutted like five times. You're really good at what you do. Watch porno, beat off like 10 times a day. I'm like, yo, I'm a horny. He says that he was popular and very sexually active, but he would still have the energy to beat off to porn in his spare time. From the sounds of it, he was obsessed with adult films and sex in general on a level far deeper than the average guy. B Pumper also claims to have lost his virginity at the age of seven and to have slept with around 5,000 women to date. I've consumed pretty much anything Brian Pumper related. Pause, hey, yeah. And the guy really just lights up when it comes time to talk about sex. I've watched clips of this guy talking talk about girls that he had sex with in high school and the level of bizarre detail and depth that he goes into is really a sight to be seen. I've often maintained that some girls I know like a Riley Reed or a Adriana Chechik are just such sexual people that it's almost impossible for me to imagine them doing anything else and I would put Brian Pumper firmly in that category. So anyway, a young BP went online, figured out how to become an adult star and soon he was on his way to Los Angeles. He hit up an adult convention at the Staples Center downtown, talked to a bunch of companies, and pretty soon he was hard at work as an adult performer. It would seem that Brian was pretty successful too. He won a bunch of awards, including the AVN Awards for Best Three-Way Sex Scene in 2005, Best Hardcore in 2007, and Best Interracial 
role in 2009. But over time, Brian Pumper started to realize that the directors were the ones really making bank in the adult world. This led to him signing an exclusive directing deal with Evil Angel. However, in 2009, he was terminated for forging STD tests for multiple girls, a claim that he has previously denied in interviews but now seems to acknowledge, although he does make some pretty good points. He didn't technically do anything illegal. If a man and a woman want to engage in a sex act and film it, they are not really under any obligation to get tested, fair enough. However, Evil Angel are one of the biggest entities in the adult world, and they're not under any obligation to distribute Brian's films if they don't feel like he's abiding by the best practices that pretty much everyone producing adult content abides by. The adult industry, from my experience, is super strict about anything related to STDs, and Brian Pumper, from what we can tell, is just a total hornball who really doesn't seem to care for following protocol, and he was not going to let an STD test stop him from getting in some barely legal South Central booty he picked up on the train the day before. Let's end this right here with a clip from DJ Vlad back in 2013 where Brian Pumper gives his thoughts on condoms. The average young male, teen, 19, 20, 21, who's out there just ramshacking shit, happy go jolly with his wee wee, this is not using condoms all the time, son. I know that for a fact. She's gonna privilege him to play in her playground. They went back to the crib, it's going down. Nick without condoms, man. Come on, trust me when I say, wait, let's go get tested and let me wait for your results to come back before you stick it in me. No. Now here's the thing, before I even got the boot by Evil Angel, Brian Pumper had already managed to piss some people off in the industry. I encountered a few different clips that feature girls claiming that Brian Pumper did some very weird stuff with them, including this clip where an adult star claims that Brian stole some toilet paper from her that she had just used to wipe her butt and he ran away and smelled it. And as if that wasn't bad enough, she then found it stored away a few days later in a drawer. Footage also surfaced on Worldstar of Nat Turner claiming that Brian paid her to poop on his face and then he ran off on the tab. Now unrelated, there's another video that also dropped on Worldstar of Brian Pumper sniffing a booty hole repeatedly, which all leads me to believe that Brian Pumper might just have a doo-doo fetish. 2009, the same year that Brian got canned by Evil Angel, Angel was also the year that he first popped up on World Star Hip Hop. They referred to him as a Lloyd Banks lookalike, and his first post involved him dissing Rick Ross. Now, why would Brian Pumper want to diss Rick Ross? Well, besides the obvious, which is to get some clout by any means necessary, Brian Pumper had also gotten mixed up in the Lloyd Banks gay adult film rumors that had gone around a bit during the beef between Rick Ross and G-Unit. G-Unit! Well, it turns out the actor that people thought was Lloyd Banks was actually a gay star named Ty Lattimore, but Brian Pumper got caught in the crossfire and apparently decided that this was a good enough opportunity to warrant a diss track. But the hype from dissing Rose only lasted so long and Brian was forced to think of more opportunities to get some notoriety. A few months after the Rick Ross diss, Brian Pumper popped up on World Star again, this time accompanied by Lawrence Fishburne's 18-year-old daughter. Now, over the years, I've had a lot of people tell me that Brian Pumper turned her out, meaning that he was the one who convinced her to get into porn, which, if you're a guy in Brian Pumper's line of work, is something like a Medal of Honor, especially when she's got this famous dad who presumably has enough money to somehow be able to avoid this whole Brian Pumper boning your daughter thing. But it turns out, fact checked, it was not actually true. Montana had already shot for Vivid, earlier that year, although it does seem that her boyfriend was the one who masterminded Brian Pumper shooting with her, thinking that it would help blow her up, which in many ways it kind of did. Now we can't be sure exactly how all this all transpired, but the partnership was announced in this five minute video, possibly filmed at a taco spot, where Brian Pumper just rants about what shooting a girl's first scene is like, going into extreme unnecessary detail like he tends to do whenever sex is discussed before the girl is put on camera, and well, she sounds like an 18 year old girl who has no idea what she's getting into. And in fact, she was. She told The Hollywood Reporter years later that she thought getting into the adult industry made sense because Kim Kardashian had gotten so popular after her sex tape came out. She was probably too young to realize how the porno would be marketed and, oh, it was marketed as the daughter of a massive celebrity making her debut. Lawrence Fishburne did not appreciate her using his last name in the marketing of her adult films and they still are not on speaking terms. Later on, Brian Pumper would insinuate in a Vlad TV interview that her boyfriend at the time was a pimp, which makes sense because Montana was arrested that same year for prostitution, although she denies that she was ever a hooker. Montana later accused Brian of exploiting her and said that he used some footage of her having sex with him that was supposed to be private in Fatty's Rhymes and Dimes 14, which is actually the name of the adult film that she appeared in. 
And around that time was when Brian Pumper decided what could be better than having sex with the guy from The Matrix's daughter than dissing Jay-Z. He put out a song called She Ain't Satisfied, which is really a completely generic I am good at sex and you are bad at sex song with Jay-Z's name in the title to get views and Brian Pumper rapping in a Lambo without ever leaving the dealership. Pumper doubled down on his desire for Beyonce in a Vlad TV interview where he once again went into ridiculous depth describing how he would pleasure her if given the chance. I guess up until this point, we really have not talked about the quality of Brian's rapping. Is his stuff good? No, no it is not. But that has not stopped him from dropping dozens of videos on his YouTube channel, all filmed in exactly the same style. What's funny is that it doesn't seem like anyone around Brian even pretended to think his music was any good. Pinky, one of the biggest black adult stars of her era, had a Vlad TV interview where she was asked if she liked his music, and she politely said that she does not. I'm very supportive of him because I respect him as a businessman, you know what I mean? I don't personally like his music. In season two, episode one of his own reality show, DJ Robbie Rob talks about the fact that Brian Pumper's jewelry is fake and his music sucks as if they are both predetermined facts and this is in the intro to his own show now i can remember about a year ago people couldn't stand brian Pumper. they didn't want to accept his rhymes his fake jury but now everybody loves him we showed everybody that it didn't even matter if he had fake jury or whack rhymes he was still able to get people to like him and still get the prettiest girls but whatever Brian Pumper lacked as an artist at the time, he easily made up for it with stuff like the Pumper dance, which he demonstrated on his reality show right here. As much as Brian wanted to rise up from out of the porn world and into the rap world, it did not take long before his newfound notoriety would start to produce some bad consequences. Like this video posted on Worldstar where a bunch of somewhat intimidating dudes ruthlessly clown Brian Pumper for his fake jewelry. Brian Pumper's coming out with his own line of fake jewelry. It's <laughs> called Pumper's Plastic. My Pico man plastic, really gonna try to kill my image like Brian that telling Pumper lies. Plastic. Yo, he gets his lines and my jewelry for yo. Now get it you in, man. so real, baby. Ow. You wanna see something real, baby? You wanna compare it? I get producers checks. I rap. AKA Plastic Man. Ow! Okay, you know what? Tell him, B. Tell him, B. Tell him! Now, Brian isn't exactly secretive about his jewelry being fake either. I've watched interview clips of him where he tried to defend his jewelry as real, but he always does so with a weird smile on his face to suggest that he's kind of in on the joke. And I've seen other clips where Brian is asked about his jewelry and he claims that it's costume jewelry because he would be stupid to walk around on the street in half a million dollars worth of jewelry, which makes at least some sense for people who actually do own half a million dollars worth of jewelry. But that being said, there is absolutely no reason to believe that that applies to Brian. And yet, Brian Pumper just kept on pumping like Lil Pump, operating a septic pump, dropping a diss track aimed at Joel Santana after Joel's talked down on him, and trying to get 50 Cent to sign him to G-Unit. Now, anyone remotely sartorially minded has probably noticed that Brian's choice of outfit, a wife beater and some bootcut jeans, is pretty much the look that 50 Cent rose to fame in. Although needless to say, it has been 20 years, and while 50 has moved on, Brian Pumper has not. Lloyd Banks seemed oddly open to the idea of Brian Pumper signing to G-Unit in a Tim Westwood interview from many years ago. You know what it is? I'm not a dream shatterer. When they ask me the question of what I think about him, you know, being with G-Unit, I say, let, let's let him rap for a few years. Let's see if the passion is still there because... What's you know, his background? What's Brian Pumper's background? Porno, I guess. And Tony Yeo said that while Brian Pumper wasn't formerly G-Unit, he was cool, which shows that at this time, actual popular rappers were at least holding out hope that Brian Pumper could do something with himself. And Brian Pumper's not a member of your camp, is he? Oh, nah. Brian Pumper, he's just cool. Just for the record, around this time, Brian did come weirdly close to accomplishing his goal of becoming part of G-Unit. Basically, 50 Cent hit Brian up and told him that he was a star and that he wanted to sign him to G-Unit. So 50 Cent's out of camera crew and they filmed a pilot in which he got to see the full Brian Pumper working out, boning on camera, recording in the studio, etc. But then years went by and Brian didn't hear back from 50, so he started to put out his own online reality series called Life of a Porno N-Word. 50 then got in touch with him and told him that that content you put out, that was great. 
don't put out anymore. So Brian stopped putting out these videos and again, didn't hear back from 50 for a while. Then one day Brian realizes that 50 had his own show now called Power. Now I don't watch Power, but Brian explained that he basically feels like 50 took the stuff that he filmed of Brian and used it as inspiration for some of the characters from Power. Now I'm not exactly sure which ones, but Brian ultimately walked away from the experience feeling like 50 intentionally slowed Brian's wave to a crawl and used some of his imagery and likeness on his TV show, which would sound like some tinfoil hat conspiracy theory shit to me when it comes to most people. But having watched 50 for so many years now, I actually 100% believe that this is the kind of evil genius shit that is within his wheelhouse. Now, another near G unit experience that Brian Pumper found himself in around that time occurred when he found himself in the studio with the late prodigy of Mob Deep. According to Brian, he approached Prodigy, introduced himself, and P just recorded a verse on the spot for Brian. And to be fair, the verse really is tailored to be on brand for Brian's style of music with most of the bars concerning sex and even shouting out Brian Pumper by name which Pumper would go on to sample for the chorus of his song. But that doesn't exactly explain why Brian didn't drop this song for seven years. Now, if you look at the date the song was released, it was just one week after Prodigy died with a new Brian Pumper verse tacked on. And to be honest, this is probably one of the best Brian Pumper songs ever released and has nothing to do with the weird ass Brian Pumper verse on it, which is just not good at all. But the Prodigy verse honestly makes up for whatever Brian Pumper did on the song. Now, I can't say for sure why the verse didn't come out for so long, but I'm gonna assume that Brian Pumper was either told not to release it by P's label or management, and that Pumper just assumed once this guy passed away, nobody was gonna give him a hard time about dropping it, which, to be fair, might actually have been true because the song is still up on YouTube right now. Realistically, in the year 2010, Brian Pumper really, really needed a Prodigy collab, and I have a very, very hard time believing that he sat on it for seven years out of the goodness of his heart. One more awesome hip hop antidote that has nothing to do with G-Unit but still needs to be noted. Brian Pumper claimed in one of these many hours of interviews I watched of him that he was in the club one night when none other than Kendrick Lamar, arguably the greatest rapper living, came up to him doing his King Dingaling dance, which basically involves the dancer sort of swinging their arm out in front of them as if it was a giant elephant sized penis. And he actually got his number and promised Brian that they would work on something. They stayed in contact for a short while, but Kendrick ended up giving him the cold shoulder over time, which sounds about right. But can you imagine that there is an alternate timeline that exists in which Brian Pumper had a skit on to pimp a butterfly? Because, I mean, it could have happened. Brian Pumper then moved on to uh, dissing Fabulous, accusing him of wearing fake jewelry, beefing with Lethal Lips, another pop and adult star at the time, and calling out Cat Stacks to film her adult debut with him. Now, some of these videos, like the Cat Stacks response to Brian's bright idea, have been lost, unable to be played on Worldstar anymore, which might be for the overall betterment of society, but to me, it's not a good thing bad. This stuff should be backed up somewhere. And yes, just as internet celebrities continued to call Brian out for views, Brian Pumper kept on getting punked in real life as well. A video came out of Mano grabbing Pumper's chains and mocking him in the club. And the same video includes footage of Pumper getting a mean hand job on the couch in the club as well. But to be honest, that image of Mano just holding Pumper's chains and laughing in his face, as a rapper, I don't really know how you ever get taken seriously again after something like that. Now, towards the end of Brian Bumper's tenure being posted heavily on Worldstar, the veil just continued to get pulled off more and more. Episode eight of the Brian Pumper reality show featured a very upset DJ Robbie Rob busting into Brian Pumper's apartment in the middle of the night with some assistance from a female who Brian had pissed off so that he could confront Brian Pumper about having called the cops on him earlier that day at a different location. Now, Brian denies calling the police repeatedly, but soon after the police arrive at this apartment, as well, causing Robbie Rob to accuse him of having called the cops a second time. Now, aside from the alleged snitching, this also revealed that Brian Pumper, at the time, was sleeping on a mattress in the middle of a living room. Well, you, what, you said it was a one bedroom. What, what a bedroom? <laughs> you lied? Huh? It's nasty. He was trying to me bareback in the backseat of his car on the first night. Now, it should be also noted that at the end of the Brian Pumper series, because yes, I did watch all of the episodes, Robbie Rob reveals that some of the show is actually scripted and Brian Pumper didn't actually call the cops the second time. Although, to be honest, this feels like kind of a bullshit excuse that Pumper made up to explain some of his questionable behavior. Now, this seems like an opportune time to ask the question that you no doubt have been wondering. Has Brian Pumper ever pumped up some male booty meat? 
Well, episode nine of the Brian Pumper Show actually included footage of one of Brian's girlfriends accusing him of using her vibrator on his behold. I'm not lying. Yeah. We didn't play with my vibrator. Yeah, we play with your vibrator. Yeah. Yeah. On your like, pussy. If you, you right. come to my house ever again in your life, you're going to be murdered, mother. My brothers will your world up like on some real shit. They already asked me, can they rob your ass? I'm like, hell no, that's my boyfriend. Plus, them jewels is fake. They some goon ass motherfucking niggas sitting on that couch plotting on your ass nigga, on some real shit. In a 2013 Vlad TV appearance, Brian Pumper actually denied ever having any kind of gay relations and even went into extreme depth about how he looks to spot male characteristics in the women that he is courting on the street as to not be fooled by a trans person. This, this is everywhere. I mean, I'm good at spotting them because I don't want to be full, fooled. You know, if I'm on a date or if I meet someone out of the club, right? You know, they're not only in gay areas. Trans like to go to regular clubs. You could never have enough knowledge. Knowledge is power. You see what I'm saying? So I've got strong radar. To <clears throat> she thinks she's fooling somebody. Not in, not only the Adam Apple, or, but yeah, I look for everything. Bone structure. Okay, she got a vein. Like, uh, that's a man right there. And then I might <laughs> school my niggas. Right. Put them up on game, yo, my nigga, yo, only right there. She, she's hanging with three girls, but that's not a girl, son. I'm just let you know. I'm letting you know right now, homie. The comment section seems to unanimously agree that there's something really off about Brian's demeanor while he's answering this question, but still, there does not seem to be any indication that Brian Pumper has ever gone to the gay side. By 2013, the Brian Pumper World Star post had slowed to a trickle, and anytime he was featured, it was usually to clown him. A fan filmed himself ridiculing Pumper through the window of his car, accusing him of having done gay porn, amongst other things. Watch my press Brian Pumper. This shit, bro. Watch this shit. Hey, Brian Pumper, you remember me? From real man, JP, nigga. JP is a bitch, nigga. You ain't shit, nigga. You ain't shit, nigga. Yeah, why you be doing gay porn on my nigga? What's up with that gay shit, nigga? He's a bitch, nigga. What's that gay porn on, nigga? What's up with that gay porn, nigga? You gay, bro? You, you bet, you bet, you bet out here for us, nigga. Bro. Then in 2015, Jenna Shea's friend actually captured her curving Pumper on camera, which allowed us a delightful look into exactly what kind of things Pumper says to women he meets on the street. I'm Jenna Shea. <laughs> Here you go. You're going to help me go I, I, can, ha I can help you, but I'm, I'm not going to do a porno with you, but I can bring some bitches or I can make something happen. That's well, what the fuck I got to do. Uh, maybe I can invite you to the studio. You can shoot that. My husband, he's trying to get it, but he doesn't have him like that. So, fuck, fuck, away, please. <laughs> I'm focused. I'm excited. Okay. I've got drive. Some people don't okay. have drive. Well, I have to. I gotta drive to go make this pill. money. In 2017, a media takeout article came out accusing Pumper of being homeless and sleeping in his car, which he refuted. But even if Pumper isn't homeless, he definitely isn't living in the lap of luxury based on what we can see on the internet. Almost all of Pumper's videos are filmed out in public on Hollywood Boulevard or at a Target, never in the comfort of his own home, which is typically where dudes who are truly addicted to getting ass tend to do most of their dirty work. Brian Pumper talks about banging women out in public restrooms a lot, and I'm thinking that maybe there's a reason since most guys, especially most famous guys, which to an extent Brian Pumper is, they just don't bang girls in bathrooms. Just something you get past in your life. When you're 16, sure. When you're 30 something, no. Anyway, Brian Pumper popped up again soon after that, getting literally chased around at a concert of some sort by a guy who claimed that he was going to kill Brian Pumper for smashing his baby mama. Now, these days, you don't see Pumper on World Star so much or really anywhere else, although his influence is still being felt as put on display when Blueface broke a couple of eggs on his mom's forehead, a la Brian Pumper. Which, holy shit, I just realized we have not talked about the egg thing yet. At some point around 2017 or so, Brian Pumper came upon a brand new viral idea that only he could come up with, where he cracks an egg on a woman's head, either during sex or during everyday life. At the time, he would post photos of himself just constantly holding cartons of eggs like most rappers hold stacks of fake money, which Brian also does. And sometimes these egging scenes would seem like they were scripted, like the girl knew he was coming. But other times it really does seem like he was just egging some random girl by surprise on a street corner, which seems kind of messed up, even by Brian Pumper's standards. Regardless, the videos of Brian Pumper doing this to women have gone viral over and over and over on social media for obvious reasons, and they have helped further cement Brian's reputation as an urban legend. Now, one thing I stumbled upon deep within Brian Pumper's Instagram is this clip where a girl on Hollywood Boulevard gets in his car and experiences about a minute of awkward conversation with Brian Pumper. And it seems like this is another one of Brian's conquests, right? 
Well, check out one of the comments on the video that appears to be from a girl featured in the video. You're so weird. You deleted the original comments that were defending me and how I put you on blast about this video. Anyone reading this? Most of this fool shit is fake AF. I was 19 years old in this video and he posts it years later. The story of this video is that I was shopping out on the boulevard visiting my sister in LA before I moved there. He was outside his car and asked to ask me a couple questions. There were people everywhere, but it was still dumb for me to get in the car, obviously, lol. But I was dumb at this time and I thought nothing of it. Anyway, he talked to me and asked me some questions and he didn't know who I was or what he was getting at. Then he asked me if I needed a ride anywhere and I said no and then I got out of the car. This guy is disgusting and a true disgrace to the human race get a real life dude go ahead and post your videos and post pictures of the who really did get nasty with you but don't use me on your gross page you probably posted me on here because i'm probably the prettiest and you want to make yourself look good but f this fake shit. i feel like this probably gives you some kind of insight into how brian's mind works he spots a pretty girl on hollywood boulevard says a bunch of weird semi-perverted shit to her edits out her responses and then posts it online and he hopes that she never catches wind of it in an attempt to cement his reputation as being able to pull cute girls then she finds it leaves a comment calling her out and he just deletes it and moves on with his day now one thing is for sure brian bumper stays in the streets last year a video came out of him fighting some dude on the train most of his Instagram posts show him driving around in an old car rapping and blabbing into the camera and then occasionally it seems like he'll manage to meet a girl and he'll convince her to film content with him and he'll celebrate the occasion by posting a bunch of photos of the girls on leashes and the laundry mat or whatever. He's been promoting his next project, Cell Phone Adventures, for years now and he recently claimed to have filmed over 1500 cell phone sex clips that he will be releasing at launch. But after all these years of promises, us dedicated Brian Pumper fans don't have a ton to show for it. Nowadays, the only time we ever really hear about Brian Pumper is when some dumb shit happens, like this video that was sent in by a fan that shows Brian Pumper getting arrested, and we still don't know why, and I would actually really like an update on that if anybody has one. A lot of people seem like they really, really want to know if Brian's actually homeless. Well, I don't know, but I have spent hours combing through his social media, and I can definitely say that if he does have a home, I have never seen any evidence of it, aside from that one video that showed him sleeping in the living room. Brian Bummer actually put out a video responding to the allegations that he was homeless. And in this video, he's like awkwardly looking around the entire time. Now let's note that this video was filmed in a studio that needless to say is not inside his home. I'm no master of body language, but if you can't deny being homeless on camera without looking around anxiously every five seconds, that's not a good sign. But is he homeless? I honestly don't know. I've also seen a lot of comments suggesting that Brian Pumper has AIDS and I have no reason to believe that. And he actually dropped a video of him taking an AIDS test in his car at one point. But the skeptic in me does want to point out that Brian Pumper does not seem to shoot any actual adult film anymore. And I mean, he is a fairly well-known guy and he seems like he's pretty good at his job. So the AIDS thing does kind of make sense to me. Like maybe that would explain why he's not doing content anymore. But again, he did take that one AIDS test, although that was a while ago. But for the record, I have no evidence to suggest that Brian Pumper does have AIDS. That's just something I've seen people throwing around in the comments. Another thing I've seen thrown around in the comments, there have been some viral rumors about Brian Pumper, and most notably this post, which seems to warn women against talking to Brian Pumper on the train, claiming that he will rape you. But I suppose that I should also point out that when you search Brian Pumper rape or anything similar, it's very hard to find anything that would corroborate these accusations. You've got a ton of women who don't seem to care for Brian Pumper and there's plenty of accusations that he's a pretty weird guy But I've yet to see any serious accusations of sexual assault And I'm not aware of any situations that have actually made their way to court now at this point I'm sure you're asking the question Adam why are you making this video? What on earth has Brian Pumper done to deserve this level of analysis? Why are you talking about an adult star who at this point doesn't seem to do much adult work outside of what he films himself on his phone? Note that on his personal social media, he will sometimes promote other girls only fans, but he has never promoted selling any of his own content that I know of in the past few years. I think I know the answer. I am fascinated by Brian Pumper because he was very early on two very, very big shifts in our culture 
culture that have taken place over the last 10 years. One, now there are a million dudes on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube making funny videos. Brian Pumper was super early on that and he realized that that was gonna be a real path towards building a name for himself way before everybody else. And number two, Brian Pumper was an adult star trying to cross over into the mainstream way before that became the norm. Now you got girls like Lana Rhodes, Riley Reed, my girlfriend, etc., who are basically like mainstream YouTubers slash OnlyFans girls slash celebrities. And that's just the norm these days. A lot of porn stars are actual celebrities these days, and it doesn't seem weird to anybody. Although Brian Pumper was never going to make it as a rapper, he still envisioned a future that I think is slowly coming into focus in which we are going to see massive overlap between hip hop and sex work. I think we're starting to see a future come into focus in which you have the online only fans type world you have the hip-hop world and they're just overlapping to an extent that probably nobody could have ever imagined five ten years ago now the question is what became of brian pumper's potential of course losing his deal with evil angel was a bad look but to me he should have been able to recover from that it's not that hard to hire a cameraman and film adult stuff. And when I listen to Brian talk in interviews, I feel like I'm listening to someone who is smart enough that he should have had the business mind to go out and get something else popping on his own. And it's been 10 plus years and all we've seen is a consistent stream of horrible rap music. And actually, to be honest, the direction his music has gone in is incredibly weird. Most of his songs are fake collabs with big artists and his flow is just something I can't even put into words. I mean, the experts out there can try to describe exactly what he's doing with his flow but I mean it's so weird it's so weird I feel like it's a window into what a weird guy this is I, I don't even want to get into his flow but his flow is so weird I'm honestly not sure if Brian Pumper is still actively shooting adult content but I would think that if he was you would see a lot more of it on his social media we live in the OnlyFans age and you would think that Brian Pumper would consider this a perfect venue to release his cell phone footage of him banging all these girls he finds on the train but no Brian Pumper does not seem to be filming or selling any adult content online in the year 2020 although there is footage of him selling his movies at an adult convention and on his instagram as recently as last week he's been claiming that he's going to drop cell phone adventures soon and that he has over 1500 scenes filmed part of me wonders how many of these girls signed waivers or were properly id to ensure that they were of age while another part of me just wonders why on earth brian Pumper would save up 1500 scenes instead of just releasing them steadily over time like what are you waiting for a lot of the comments on his post are wondering the same thing asking brian why he's making them wait almost 10 years to see this content with some very wise commenters also wondering what is the video quality going to be like on seven or eight year old cell phone footage i mean you couldn't even record video on an iphone until 2009 and presumably some of this content pumper has been storing up is approximately that old Really, a big part of the problem for Brian is that he's still doing the same exact shit he was doing in 2010, and there's something a lot less appealing to viewers about just shamelessly chasing ass day in and day out on Hollywood Boulevard at 38 than there is at 28. Brian had a window of opportunity where everybody in hip hop was talking about him and he did a pretty good job of staying in the mix for a couple years, but he still never really managed to create a platform. His Twitter and Instagram histories only go back a few years. He claims that he actually lost the password to his original Twitter and I heard that his Instagram was deleted, but as much as he was able to go viral on sites like Worldstar, it was just too early for him to really capitalize on this wave of viral attention in the way that you might expect someone like him to be able to nowadays. I mean, Wide Neck had over a million followers and as big as that meme was wide neck ain't no brian pumper it's very easy for me to imagine that if brian pumper came out on the scene in 2018 instead of 2009 he might have been able to capitalize on his fame in a much more sustainable way i can very easily imagine a world in which brian pumper tweeting about coffee could get lil nas x levels of retweets in which brian pumper vlogs could get david dobrik's friends levels of views yes brian pumper is creepy but is 6ix9ine not creepy why when I mention Brian Pumper to current adult stars do they have no idea who I'm talking about? Was his time spent in the mainstream adult world so bad that Brian Pumper wouldn't be a logical addition to a blacked film? I don't know. I just feel like we took this guy for granted. Look at this guy. This is some good stuff. The dancing. Primarily the dancing. And the egg, the egg thing. The egg thing was good. The music sucked. The jewelry was fake. But the egg thing was good. Anybody who's got any more information, drop it in the comments. I, I honestly can't believe that I took this long to make this video and that I finally did and that it's this long. But here it is. And I, I think it's done. I think that the audio worked. I think the video worked. I think I'm actually going to be able to put this out and maybe be able to move on. 
Although I kind of doubt that. I feel like this is going to open the doorway for me to be talking about Brian Mavera a lot more in the near future. Also, I feel like I'm kind of losing my voice now. I was screaming on this trip for a week. And now here I am. I'm kind of losing my voice because I'm talking about Brian Pumper so much. Please drop a comment. Like, comment, subscribe. Ridge Wallet. Shout out Ridge Wallet. Code Adam22. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Brian Pumper. Where you at, dog? Free Brian Pumper. Let's go.